Voting should be made as easy as possible. It's a democratic right, that seems simple, irrefutable. But just months away from an election, the Morrison government and One Nation have deemed up to write a law that would do just the opposite. Why is the Prime Minister seeking to suppress Australians' right to vote on the eve of an election? I'm going to tell you all about their racist plan to wind back the clock on voting rights and how you can help us stop them. Most Australians believe our voting system to be free, fair and accessible. But the reality is, this system was built from exclusion. From 1902, an act was passed that barred any First Nations person from voting unless a state already allowed them to. It was not until 1949, after World War II, where a small concession allowed First Nations people who served in the armed forces the right to vote. Campaigns in the 60s fought for government inquiries into voter exclusions of First Nations people and found that it was widespread for many states. While the Electoral Act was then amended to give First Nations people the right to vote, we were not automatically enrolled to vote and it was an offence to even encourage us to enrol. In 1983, just 40 years ago, with continued campaigning, amendments were passed to the Act, which meant voting was compulsory for all Australians, including First Nations people, and that active efforts could be made to encourage First Nations people to enrol to vote. That's almost 100 years of strength and resilience from First Nations communities who have fought for access to the polls. And now the Morrison government wants to threaten voting rights all over again. I interviewed James McGrath last month. He's twice recommended voter ID. When you go to vote, that you should be able to say you are who you are and provide some form of identification to support that. Since their election in 2013, the coalition government has been pushing for punitive voter identification laws. They've been met with opposition each time, but now another election looms and they're doubling down on their efforts. Isn't the only reason the Prime Minister is doing this is to deny many Australians a vote, particularly those from remote communities. These new laws pose a real threat to the right to vote for people and country. In remote communities, there isn't easy access to government agencies. People could have to travel hours away from their communities to get a hold of a photo ID. These punitive voter ID laws will see First Nations people turned away from voting on election day just because they don't have the right ID. If the enrolment of First Nations people across the country is around 70, 76%, then shouldn't that be where the focus is? It's an attack on democracy which will affect everyday people who don't have a fixed address. Not just First Nations people, but also young people, houseless people, and people escaping domestic violence. There are many valid reasons why someone might not have an ID. None of these reasons are acceptable to deny someone the right to vote. And make no mistake, these laws are designed to block the very people from voting who are unlikely to vote for a Conservative government. From First Nations people who are standing up against fracking on their land, to young people who are fighting for climate action, to people demanding a livable increase to income support. Maybe you've never heard of any of this, but there are huge efforts to block people's right to vote happening right now. In the 2016 Northern Territory election, thousands of people in remote communities found themselves taken off the roll for unjust reasons like not having a conventional address or changing their name. First Nations people have cared for country for thousands of years and hold the solutions to many of the issues facing their electorate, yet the government is trying to strip them of their right to vote. So how do we stop it? The political advocacy group GetUp is mounting a high court challenge to Australia's electoral laws on behalf of the estimated hundreds of thousands of people who miss this week's voter enrolment deadlines. In 2010, the Get Up movement challenged Howard-era electoral laws that would have seen tens of thousands of young people denied the right to vote just because they missed a registration deadline. We took this all the way to the High Court and we won. The Morrison government is renowned for sneaking through anti-democratic legislation at the 11th hour. We need to act fast. We need to create a massive public outcry against those trying to shut everyday people out of politics. Please sign and share the petition. Contact your local members of parliament and send a clear message. The right to vote is something worth fighting for. We've done it before and we can do it again.